The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Uh, I posted into Tiger TV just now uh, the S&P 500 E-mini. We're trading up here at uh, 1509 right now, 1508.75. Uh, that's the 61% retracement coming off of the high we made several days ago. Uh, I also posted the, the chart for this showing you that the big ABCD pattern that formed around 1580. Uh, five yesterday, and we're getting that rally coming off now. So if this is correct, we should start down sometime during this hour that we're on, and we'll see if it's uh, if it's going to uh, work or not. Uh, if it gets above 15, 14, it would certainly not be a correct uh, thing to look at. The main part that I want to talk about today in the first part of the show, and however long it takes, I think we can do it. You know, within about a half an hour is the. Um, the status of the bond market. You know, yesterday we had uh, Chairman Bernanke uh, being grilled, and I really should give a gold medal to Elizabeth Warren, Senator Warren, for really putting him on the spot and finally getting him to admit that the the bank too big to fail thing was a total disaster and it was wrong. She got him to admit that, which I mean it doesn't mean very much because he's a government employee, but the fact that it was uh, you know the same process that we've been going through, we've been living. Since 1980, um, 1981, we've been in living in an environment of uh, lower interest rates. If you'll remember back in those days, uh, uh, the 70s, the late 70s is when the credit cards uh, first started to come out, and interest rates were, were very high uh, at that time. Uh, the long bond uh, was around 14%. You could buy tax-free munis, triple A's, for, you know, 14%, which was the equivalent to a 28% yield. The problem was they were called about four or five years later, but still for those four or five years, you know, they were a good investment. Now now what's happened uh, for the last 32 years, uh, we've been looking at lower inter interest rates all during this time, and now we're completing, you know, this major uh, um, butterfly pattern that we've been talking about up in this 150 area. Uh, in the Treasury bonds uh, for quite some time, and it's just a matter of time. Uh, these these charts don't go up forever, and this one's got a lot of timing in it. Um, you know, the long bond is still trading around, a uh, 30-year bond is around 2.8%, which is still, uh, you know, very, very cheap. The problem is, folks, they, they give the banks uh, all of this money, however trillions of dollars that it was, and they didn't put it into the economy to help anybody. All they did was to buy the bonds or other short-term instruments, you know, to get the interest rates at 25 to 4%, depending upon which instruments they picked, and just pocketed the difference. It was free money. Now, someday this money has to be expatriated. It's got to come back, and this is where the problem's going to come because when interest rates start to go up, and they do over a long period of time, they have wide fluctuations, we will be looking at a real shock to the market, and I believe this could be the outlier effect of what we're looking at. Uh, you're seeing some of this um, in the news when you're watching Italy. Italy, I believe, is the third largest country for debt uh, in the world, and they're having a whole lot of... Uh, you know, problems over there, you know, with uh, with that particular thing. So this is what we want to be watching. We're at a, a very critical level in the Treasury bonds uh, as we speak today, and I will certainly, uh, you know, go into that in a little bit. But I just wanted to re remind everybody uh, where we are with long-term interest rates, and this goes back to the formation of our country. And you can see the wide fluctuations that we've had from, uh, you know, 2%, all the way up to 15%. 15% is what we were looking at uh, in the, um, the 1980s when we had the hyperinflation, and they also got to 11% right before uh, the, the Civil War back in the 1840s. And I've said all along that I believe this cycle that we're in is a debt repudiation cycle. Um, it's based on a couple of long-term you know, cycles that we look at that are related to you know these planetary things that I look at. Basically, uh, Saturn and Neptune are the ones that control the credit markets, at least in my opinion, but we'll see, you know, what that's going to do. But this is, uh, we're, at the, we're at the far end of the scale here, and so this is why we want to be, you know, really watching, you know, where we stand 
with some of these things right now. So the first chart that I wanted to, to bring up here and uh, let you folks uh, take a look at is the uh, daily chart of the, uh, of the long bond because um, th there's a real interesting uh, thing that we have uh, uh, going on right now is t today's high was an exact 61% retracement of the high that we made uh, on Christmas Eve. Uh, excuse me, New Year's Eve. So that high we made at that 146. If you recall last week when we were looking at 142, which was a 61% retracement, you know, of the um, of the move from way back in March, it was exactly 61%. The first target back is this level of where we are right now. And I'll post that one into Tiger TV so that you can also take a look at that. So we've completed the move, uh, and we've been up about 10 days. So we're due for correction. And we will find out, uh, you know, how much of a correction we get. But ideally, what we would like to see is the bonds back off a point or two, and then try for that 148 level uh, one more time. But we need to be really, really prepared, folks, because I'm going to put the long-term weekly bond chart up now to let you take a look at this, because this shows that 61% retracement on a on a technical basis. And what what's really important here is that if we break below the 142 level now after this nice rally that we've had over the past five or six weeks, that's telling us that that cycle has been broken. If you recall, you know, we talked about gold when it was at that 1627 level, uh, which was a 61% retracement, you know, how important that it was, and that if it breaks it, it would go down to the, you know, the 15, I think we were saying around 1560, it went to 15 uh, or 1570. I don't even know what the low was, somewhere in 15, uh, low 1500s, 1540 maybe, I don't know. But we're going to cover gold, so I'll show it to you later. But uh, when it breaks those levels, that tells you that the cycle has been broken and, uh, you know, you're ready to move to the downside. I, I feel very, very strongly about this. This is uh, how I made uh, my first big score in the market back in the early 70s by looking at these cycles. The problem was is when they turned down, I didn't realize that the rallies that they could have would be very, very minor, and I learned a very difficult lesson that uh, a sense of hopefully we've been able to, uh, you know, to rectify. So we're at a really critical level here on these bonds on the weekly basis. Um, if you'll notice, the uh, I'm going to bring this into that today's high uh, was also an exact 382 coming off of the high from last November. So we had two very, very strong ratios coming in at that 146.09 level uh, in the uh, in the Treasury bonds. Now, should we get above that, you know, that's going to make a whole whole lot of difference, and we'll be able to uh, you know see that uh, this thing could you know go a little bit uh, higher. But if we break below 142 in the Treasury bonds, uh, we, we're going to have major problems. In, well, we're not going to have major problems because we're going to be short. But uh, the rest of the world is going to be looking at why could this possibly be happening. Now, uh, we just did the weekly for the Treasury bonds. Now, I wanted to go and, and show you the difference between the notes and the bonds because the, the, the patterns are very, very similar, except that the, the notes have been, you know, far, far stronger. In other words, if you'll notice, it's had, uh, we, we're, we're actually forming a head and shoulders pattern now. Uh, in the in the Treasury notes, and the, the high today in Treasury notes was an exact 61% retracement off of that November high. Now, I just, re, you know, talked to you about the weekly Treasury bonds, and they made a 382. The Treasury notes made a 618. So the notes have been, you know, much, much stronger. So if, in fact, rates start to turn here, and I mean go higher, this is where they, they will probably do it, they will do their, their uh, damage uh, from this level. Uh, the first question that someone asks is, well, won't that be bullish for stocks? We, we, I don't know if it will be bullish for stocks, but usually higher interest rates are not bullish for stocks. But remember, the stock market and the bond market are totally different. The bond market is, I believe, three and a half times larger in, in, in the volume and scale uh, and capitalization and everything than the stock market. So the bond market is by far and away the bigger of the market. So if people are going to get hurt, it's easier to hurt people that are in, you know, one particular market that is, uh, you know, really exposed, and that is, in fact, what I think has been happening because we've been looking at markets because people have been searching for yield. They want to be able to buy 
you know, things that, uh, you know, give them the highest yield, and they disregard, you know, the, the ratings. And, and now that we've had this uh, little mini scandal that we've got going on, you know, in uh, the Standard and Poor's and, and, and Moody's and some of these others, you know, you're seeing that you've had, you know, a tremendous amount of, uh, you know, things that are just, just, you know, flat out not right. And uh, so this is uh, uh, this is where I think the outlier event was. This was my, uh, you know, I, I really believe this thing is really going to have a uh, tremendous move uh, up. I, it probably it would probably be slow because the bond, the Fed's going to do everything that they can to uh, you know to possibly you know to stop this. But uh, one one of the vehicles that I use to watch this uh, market is the uh, is the high yield bond market, and I'll post the the H Y G, which is the I I shares for high yield bonds. And you'll still see that the people are still coming in and buying the uh, high grade high grade bonds, even though that uh, uh, you know they're they're being downgraded at the same time, and yet they're searching for yield. They're clamoring for yield, which I think is the is the wrong or the wrong thing to do at this particular time. So we have a we have a situation now in the the notes and the bonds that we hit tr uh, really important numbers today. Uh, on the uh, on the upside coming off of those rallies, but below 142 in those Treasury bonds, uh, you're, that'd be one of the few times in my life where I'll probably look to be uh, a short seller uh, if it breaks below that point. Uh, that would be similar to gold breaking that that 1627 level uh, when then it broke a quick you know uh, 800 80 dollars, but. That this is what uh, this is what it's looking like, uh, you know, with the Treasury bonds. I don't think we have much much farther to go uh, before the thing finally, you know, starts to to turn a little bit, and then we will uh, start to accelerate. But this long term cycle that's been in here is coming uh, very very close to uh, uh, you know seeing the things turn, and this means that your know, mortgage rates were going to go uh, higher. And also, you know, your interest rate, well, I, I don't know how much higher they can put your interest rates on your credit cards and stuff like that, but the other interest rates that you'll pay for furniture or what else you, you have is, uh, you know, they'll, they'll go up too. When, when I was a kid, folks, we didn't have credit like this. You had credit in a little town of Terre Haute, Indiana, if the, if the merchant knew your family and they say, okay, you can pay a monthly payment or something like that. But we didn't have credit cards, and they had layaway, of course, but there were no credit cards. They had some payment plans that, you know, there were 20% a, a, uh, a year or something like that, but they're not full-scale credit where you go to McDonald's and, uh, you know, someone charges $1.28 for a cup of coffee. You know, I mean, it's frustrating. You go to the market, and a woman, you know, she's wearing a Rolex watch, and she doesn't have any cash. I mean, what, what's wrong? I mean, she ought to have at least $50 in cash, you'd think. They, they use cards for everything. And now I understand that they have all kinds of these uh, guys that are scanning stuff, so, you know, to steal the card number, so who knows. This I am not involved in, my friend. Okay, we're going to take a little break here, and we're going to uh, switch over to the gold market. 877-927-6648. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. 
bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, what I'm going to do is to uh, talk about the, the gold market because um, uh, we, we've had some big swings happening recently. We had a, a nice move of um, uh, $75 off of the bottom. And all I wanted to do was to show over the last couple of days the equal retracements that we've been we've been seeing in the gold market. Each one of them uh, has been, um, you know, just about uh, twenty dollars, and we're sitting there uh, right now. We're at the twenty dollar level, and uh, if we go down much, you know, much uh, lower than where we are now, we'll probably come all the way down into the fifty. Well, we're at sixteen oh one, so saying it's going to fifteen ninety five is is not a really big deal. But uh, th this is what we do is when we're looking at, the, you know, the shorter-term opportunities in order to, uh, you know, to spot the market. Yesterday's uh, wild action that we had uh, was, a, was a really beautiful pattern because we had been watching for the correction to be $20, and it made a beautiful ABCD correction down at the 1582 level, which was the 61% retracement off of the low of February 22nd, and then we had the... Uh, the, the big move up. Now, the jury is still out on the gold market, folks, because we have um, we, we've had a you know a really big A B C D move happen. And you'll if you get a chance, take a look at the, uh, the equal moves you know since October that we've had in gold. I've colored them in with the little ellipses so you'll be able to uh, you know take a look at them. But we completed that very large A B C D pattern down at that 1565 level. Uh, the low was actually 15.55, and then of course we've had a pretty good rally that's equaled the rally that we had in November, and also the rally that we had around Chris, uh, New Year's Eve, and then also the current rally that we have going on uh, right now. So 
these equal rallies are, uh, you know, holding up, you know, pretty much uh, where we thought they where they would be. The real key to the gold market, in my opinion, on on this particular move is how it's going to handle the 61% uh, retracement if we do get it. And that I'll put this into uh, Tiger TV so you can take a look at it because it's down quite a ways from here. But this would be the really big test, and that that will come in at around 1580. That's about 20 dollars from where we are right now, which would be twice what the normal, uh, you know, reaction is. So that's double, which is actually a good thing. So if we get the gold down to around the 1580 level and it holds, then we've got a really good chance, you know, for the market uh, to, to uh, turn and move uh, in, in, you know, in the upside. You know, silver held up uh, above the 786, which has been good, but, you know, for, for the last five or six days, silver has done virtually nothing. You know, it's hardly had, you know, any type of a move uh, uh, of any consequence at all. So that's the, the main thing that uh, we're looking at. The, uh, the one other that I we can cover here before we uh, reach our break here, and that is the, uh, the copper market because, you know, we've been, we've been saying that this has been a, you know, a dying quail for a long time. And, uh, you know, this is telling us that this stock market is not bullish. I know it looks bullish to you by looking at the charts, but if you look at copper, which, uh, you know, controls a lot of the things that, that are in the stock market, then, you know, you'll certainly, uh, you'll certainly be uh, surprised uh, that the fact that copper is not going up. It broke those ascending wedges that we were looking at, and that's it. We've, tomorrow on the commodity department, uh, the commodity show that we do, I'm going to, you know, really, you know, go into the inflation deflation thing a little more than I did uh, in last week's uh, thing because I think that's the key to what we're watching here. Because if, you know, if the Fed put in two plus trillion dollars and it, it hasn't really stimulated the economy, it stimulated the stock market, but it hasn't stimulated the economy uh, to that great effect. And if that starts to unwind and these interest payments start to go up. That's going to be a double whammy on them. So that's one thing that they 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 failed to, uh, to 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 factor in. Uh, many of you don't remember this, but back in the in the late '90s, there was a firm called Long Term Capital. They had a uh, uh, I think they had three or four Nobel Prize economists on their board, and they were making money faster than than Bernie Madoff was printing it. But they were actually making money. But the problem was. They, they forgot to factor in the liquidity of trying to get out of positions, and they, they literally went bankrupt, and it took the Federal Reserve to come in and keep them from bankruptcy and basically to keep the Goldman Sachs and, and J.P. Morgan from taking, you know, billion-dollar hits, then that's, that's what happens. I mean, the, the, the politics that we have is, is so corrupt, and, I, you know, it's probably never going to change, but, you know, we live with it. That's all we can do. I can remember back in 19, uh, I think it was 1986 or 87, when Mexico defaulted on $4 billion worth of bonds, and the Federal Reserve came in and uh, gave them the money to uh, uh, basically, you know, uh, said, yeah, it's okay. And it was all Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs would have taken a $4 billion hit. If it wasn't uh, if it wasn't for Reuben, you know, carrying him out, guess who Reuben went to work for when he got out of the Treasury? Well, it was Citicorp again this time. Anyway, we're going to take a little break here, and then we will uh, go back to uh, some things uh, that are related to the market, particularly Apple. We want to watch that. Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91, and only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insights subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013 act today has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you 
now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. And someone asked uh, the... Uh a question about Apple, and I, I still believe that we're we're heading down below 400 in Apple. I will post the daily chart in there, and you know this the stock is uh, the rallies are getting worse and worse, and the the sell offs are getting worse and worse. So it doesn't look like it wants to go much higher. It, it would have to get above uh, $490 a share, then I would say, yeah, the bottom is in, and uh, we missed the uh, the big bottom. But right now, it still looks like uh, we've got a chance. Uh, to uh, you know, to, to make that lower low down around four hundred uh, four hundred dollars uh, mark, you know. So we'll see. Um, the, uh, the 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 news that's out there, you know, the, the sequester, whatever they want. We go through this stuff every day. I mean, if it's not a sequester, it's a tarp or something else. It's just one other thing that the financial press uses. Folks realize that when you have CNBC and Bloomberg and and all these other things, they make their money you know, by giving information, and they give the information by selling the advertising, and that's, you know, the real bulk of, of what they're looking at. So this is the, you know, the real reason, uh, you know, why they exist. And uh, believe me, the not all the stuff that you that you see on the uh, these programs and stuff is true, and um, you know that as well as I do, but you have to be very, very, careful and, and don't be naive and believe just because someone says something including me or basil or tom or steve or daryl anybody you should do the work yourself you know and prove it to yourself that this is because uh, you're the one that ultimately has to take the risk 
you know, when you're when you're doing the, you know, during the trade. A perfect example is when I started the show. I thought that the the S and P was going to be topping around this 1509 level, and we're three point three and a half points higher than that now. And if we get above 1515, this will certainly, you know, certainly be wrong. But uh, you know, we'll just wait and see how that comes out. Now, the next one that I'm watching, if it happens on this show, is if we get gold down to that 1580 level. And that would be the 61 percent, and that's going to be a major test, folks. I, I don't want to do the commodity uh, show today, but but you, when you look at these commodity prices and you look at where these things are, these are not inflationary. I mean, we've got a lot of things that are coming down. I know the prices in the supermarkets and stuff are not coming down yet, but uh, they are coming down. It doesn't make any difference whether it's cattle. You know, uh, corn, they're all, they're all getting hit. You know, the metals, everything. Copper is, uh, you know, a perfect example. You know, it's probably the, the single most uh, important of all commodities, uh, you know, for especially for electronics and anything that's built with a, with a solid shell. There's got to be some electrical current that's, you know, covered by copper, and yet it's being hit pretty bad. And, you know, the Chinese market is still going down. It had, has little rallies, but we've had so many lower tops uh, that, that that's also going down. So it's, you know, I know the stock market's had a big rally and everything looks really good. We've had some good shakeouts here recently, which is the ideal what you really need because when the market makes it, makes it makes a bottom, it does it pretty much the same way that it makes a top. But the, the bottoms are, are more, uh, more powerful because fear is a greater emotion than greed. When you have the top, the tops come in because people are lackadaisical and they also have uh, you know, they're, uh, I guess they're mesmerized by where things are. I, I will have to share something that is the number one rule uh, for uh, for trading, and it's a, it came from Larry Williams, my good friend, uh, many, many years ago, and it's the calculator rule. If you If you go to the calculator to see how much money you're making on a trade, pick up the telephone or hit the button on your electronic trading and get out of the trade because when you're doing that, your greed mechanism is at the top of its list. It's it's up. It's at the the uh, the ten point scale. It's telling you that oh boy, look how much money I'm making when you're using that calculator. So when you have the calculator rule, just do it. And believe me, it will save you thousands and thousands of dollars. I uh, I can tell you, I, I I think about it whenever I ever start to do it. The first thing I do is I remember what Larry told me, and I go in and I just take it off. And that's it. No, my grandmother didn't tell me that one. Uh, the only thing my grandmother told me about trading is she said, whenever you feel like trading coffee or cocoa, go over and lay down on the couch until the urge goes away. And I don't like to trade coffee and cocoa. I don't trade the New York softs pretty much. Hey, folks, we got such great markets in Forex in the crude oil and gold and uh, the Treasury bonds. I mean, and e even the S&P. I mean, all... They're wonderful markets. Look at the look at the bond market. You know, it's three three or four times bigger than the stock market, and hit the exact sixty one percent retracement on the weekly chart on the notes, and on the weekly chart of the bonds, it hit the six one eight of the September high or November high, and a three eight two of the high from last year. So I mean, that's telling you at one forty six oh nine there was some pretty stiff resistance in there, and I think. Um, uh, Zetao in the room, uh, John uh, pointed that out earlier uh, before, uh, I think, when Basil uh, was on the show. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, you know, real interesting. And I, as a matter of fact, what I was showing in gold, I was working on that as Basil was giving, you know, his show. He was showing the, you know, the relationships between these moves. And that's that's what I'm trying to do is to find, you know, the relationships to see if, uh, if they hold steady. And that's really, you know, what we're looking at. Um, the uh, next thing that I that I wanted to uh, to mention is, you know, the, the the biggest part of the debt cycle that we're that we're dealing in, and I I hate to get back to that, but I should get back to it because that's a really really a long term cycle. In, in 1981, if you'll take a look at that, go into Tiger TV and look at it. In October of 81 was the bottom of the interest rate market. Uh, that was a, the top of rates. In other words, rates started to drop at that point. Uh, they went. Um, the rates started to go uh, lower for about um, into, like, I think from 1981 to 1987, which led to that big bull market of 87, and then we had the crash of 87, 
that lasted all of uh, six weeks from August 25th down to October the uh, 19th. Uh, and then from then we went in a bull market that went all the way up into uh, 2000. But that period between 81 and 87 saw one more test of the uh, of the interest rate market in that 1987 period when people got very very scary, and that was the best thing uh, you know to be in uh, at that particular time was the bonds. On the day of the crash of uh, uh, October the 19th, and I hope none of you ever have to go through it. I, w- I went through it and I was on the right side of the market and I was scared to death. So I mean I was making more money than I'd made in you know that we didn't have you know instantaneous uh, you know, equity like we have now, but I could do it in my head, and it, it was amazing the amount of money. The S&P was moving 50 basis points. That's equivalent to 500 points now because it was 10 to 1. It was it was $500 per point, not $50 per point. So it would be equivalent of the E-mini moving 500 points right now. In other words, it's trading at, at uh, 11, uh, 15, 51. It would be trading the next time. It would be trading at 1,200 even. And so that's how crazy it was. So you don't want to go through that again. And it was a very, very uh, difficult time. But after that, after it settled down, you know, the market became back and became relatively normal again. But it was a really difficult thing uh, to go through. And uh, remember that the stocks uh, that day were down 16%. Uh, There were 2,000 stocks on the New York Stock Exchange at that time. And I believe there were only 13 issues that were up on that day of October 19th. And, and if you'd have bought any of those 13 stocks, you would have made a lot of money because if you stop and think that if you can't get a stock down when the rest of the stock market is down 60%, uh, 16% on the day and the whole world is saying it's the end of the world, boy, some of us must really like those stocks. And if you'd have looked back, those were the stocks that really were good. Some of them were thin stocks. But and still, they were the ones that uh, you know did the best uh, over the next in, ensuing months. So when you see stuff like that happening, remember that that is an important uh, you know important thing to uh, you know really uh, really to remember. Um, uh, someone said, "What? <laughs> I don't know how to answer this, but is there a possibility that the apple has bottomed? Yes, there is certainly uh, a possibility that apple has bottomed. I, 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 I we said last week at the four. Uh, 42 per share, we should get a little rally. We rallied about 9 or $10. We took that out yesterday by just a couple of dollars, and we're still, you know, above that point. So, you know, you really want to, uh, you know, keep in mind that uh, that's what, uh, you know, that's what you're, what you're dealing with with these things and, and as far as the overall, overall market uh, is doing. I wanted to, to take a, uh, a little bit of a second here and get, because um, uh, I, I, I'm really a believer in Forex uh, markets. They're fun to trade, and you can trade them through the futures markets at the CME, which is a lot of fun. But just the, the little patterns that, uh, that we look at, these ABCD patterns and 618 patterns and things like that, they, they, they are really, they're really quite exciting. And I wanted to put one uh, that we had this morning. Uh, it was in the, the bond, uh, excuse me, the, the British pound. And the British pound has been getting hammered. We, we talked about this many times uh, over the past weeks because when we broke below the 786, this market was, you know, on its way down. But if you, if you go to Tiger TV, you'll see the, the beautiful ABCD pattern that it made up there at that 150, level. And uh, it's had lower tops all along. And so that's the, the type of... Uh, you know, trades that you have. The problem is they're all probabilities. You don't know which ones are going to work and which ones are not going to work. Nobody knows that. It's all all a game of probabilities. But with the British pound, if you'll remember this one thing, and I think this is this is what we're, we're what we're showing, uh, trying to show last night uh, to some uh, some of my folks that were uh, paying attention to me as we were chatting. Um, we had this big breakdown in the British pound in the 155 level. Now. The, the government didn't come out until three or four days later, the, the, the British government, to tell us that, 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 yeah, we got a really bad problem with debt and we're not going to be able to control it uh, the way that we want it and such like that. And now you had a big move down, the market gap down uh, on Sunday night, and then uh, what we were looking for was that A, B, C, D uh, pattern to form so so we could put on, you know, a low-risk short position. And that's the 
the, the chart that we put in previously on the five minute to show you that that's, uh, I believe it was a 15 minute, I'm not sure, let me double check. Uh, yes, it was a 15 minute chart but I'll put it in on the, it was, it was, was the five minute, they're the same because they do the same thing. But you, you, when you see these A, B, C, D corrections in the direction of the trend and the trend is down, those offer you the best uh, possible, uh, you know, things that you can, you know, enter. Now, that's what I did with the, uh, with the S&P when we came on the show when it was trading in that 15.08.5 uh, to 15.09 level. And yet, it still went uh, a little bit higher, and that that certainly does happen. I mean, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to, you know, get them all right. But you put your stop in, wait, don't look at it, and believe me, folks, the monitor that you're looking at is not your friend, because if you're if you're long a stock, you focus on the upticks, and if you're short a stock, you focus on the downsticks. And the reason for that is our bodies are, you know, programmed to prevent pain, and if you're long something and it's going down, you don't like to see that. And so you will get very, very nervous, and you'll start making decisions based on that. And what will happen is you could be still right on the market, and the market's coming down, and then you say, oh, dear, it's goodbye house, goodbye car, goodbye boat, goodbye wife, and pretty soon you're out of the position. And then just as you get out of it, it rallies back to go up to your target to where you should be. So try to focus on not watching the monitor. You know, put your put your trades on, okay? And if you want to watch your monitor, let's say you're in the British pound trade, go watch corn, go watch gold, go watch crude oil, go watch apple. Watch something else, learn from it, but don't watch the thing that you're in because no one really cares whether you're in that or not. No one knows your position. No one cares what you're doing. The only thing you're doing is focusing on the dollar amount, and that's what's tough. If they didn't, if they didn't uh, keep score with money here, uh, you, you know, everybody could do this. I mean, it'd be paper trading. It would be just like, you know, playing backgammon or, or roulette for free. I mean, that's you know the bottom line. But you know, frankly, you know, it's it's all about you know making money. It's not about being right or wrong. And you've got to be able to protect yourself, you know, and see what uh, see what really happens. Um, Tomorrow we're going to talk. I'm going to get Rich Anderson on uh, the show because, you know, Rich is the, the premier guy for commodities, and we've had such a big break in wheat. Uh, you know, wheat is down near levels that uh, started the drought. Uh, corn has had a, a tremendous break. Um, beans have held up relatively well. We're going to cover all that tomorrow, you know, on the commodity report. But, you know, today's the stock report. What I wanted to do today is I believe that, you know, we're having these really vicious rallies in the market. Uh, these are normal. Uh, even if we even even if we make a new high uh, in the Dow or uh, the S and P or the Nasdaq, I don't think it will make uh, you know a great deal of difference because this pattern that we're looking at on the long term weekly pattern is really coming uh, really coming in together. And believe me, the market's there to uh, you know trick you, and this is a good way to do it by having these tremendous rallies. You're down uh, 200 points. You drop the Dow, drop 154 points in an hour the other day, and it gets it back in five or six hours the next day. So that's that's just uh, the normal uh, people moving money around. And, uh, you know, don't don't be, uh, don't take it personal when you see these rallies. Anyway, we'll take a break here, and we'll be back. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. 
Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rose, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, folks. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about uh, towards the end of the show here is the uh, U.S. dollar versus the uh, Japanese yen. Uh, we've been talking about some of the cycles that we were expecting to crest uh, somewhere, much like we did last year. Uh, into that February-March period. If you'll take a look at the Tiger TV, you'll see that those two triangles are perfectly equal. Uh, we were looking for the price to come in around this 95 level, but we only got to the 94-65 uh, level, and we've certainly uh, made some type of a, of a minor top here in the uh, uh, Japanese yen versus the dollar. The, the, the key thing now is we have to find a very nice... Um, a symmetrical A, B equals C, D pattern on an hourly chart or even a daily chart. This this top here uh, could last as much as, uh, you know, two or three weeks because realize the market went up uh, for so many weeks. It was up 22 weeks. That, that's one of the, the longer runs in the history of, of the world. And so, um, you know, we, you've got to pay, uh, pay attention, uh, you know, to the, the big, correction if we do get a big correction I think we would get at least a 382 correction uh, on this move uh, it could be it could be more but you want to make sure the pattern comes in and that would be another four points lower you know it's already dropped uh, three and a half points so another four points lower down around the uh, you know the 87 level that would probably be um, uh, you know a place that it, that it could get too easily but what you'd like to see it do 
is to make it so that it has a spot uh, to uh, have a perfect A B equals C D pattern, so that you're able to uh, you know see the uh, the pattern uh, clearly. And I'll, I'll go to a half hour chart here. We got just a sec. I'll do an hourly because it'd be a lot easier to see. And you'll see when you take a look at this, uh, you'll see that we don't have any uh, A B C D pattern here. We basically have come straight down. Uh, from 90, uh, almost 95 to 91, without any much, uh, without any much, that's great grammar from Terre Haute, Indiana, without much of a correction. But uh, what we'll see now is if we do get uh, an ABC forming on the hourly basis, then that'll be one that you'll be able to uh, look at. We were bullish this stuff at 75. Uh, got out of it a little too premium, premium, uh, prematurely at 86, but uh, you know if it gets back to that 86 level again, it'll give me another chance, uh, you know, to uh, to take a look at it uh, from the long side. Uh, and uh, the, the the keep the things to keep in mind are the um, the one the 142 level on the bonds. Uh, you know, gold should have some pretty good support at 1580, uh, and silver should have some support. At the uh, you know twenty eight dollar level uh, per ounce, if it doesn't, you know they're going to shut the doors on these things and these mutual funds and hedge funds that are still in these things. Uh, there's going to be a big sell off, much like we had in two thousand and and seven and two thousand and eight. There's certainly that that possibility, but you know right now uh, they've made some type of a bottom there with that big A B C D in the gold market and silver holding above 28. That's it, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.